In this episode, we are going to look at Teams whiteboard. During COVID, all meetings became online and many people have not realized that there is a brilliant whiteboard available inside Teams. First of all, where is it? Whenever you share screen, we get many options, one of which is whiteboard. So remember, whiteboard is built in to Teams. So you don't need any other software. Now, where do you go first? Go to the create button and templates. There are nine categories which are very interesting and under that there are 48 templates. Why is it important? Because these are the common reasons why people in the world do whiteboarding in the first place. So click on the ones at least you don't know and then look at that paragraph where it will tell you under what circumstances to use it. If you like it, use it. Now once you add whiteboard to meetings, every participant in the meeting can actually be a part of the whiteboarding session. If you go to the settings, that is the wheel, you can allow or disallow other people from participating in the whiteboarding, which makes it much more interactive. Now, obviously, when you're learning something, you're going to make mistakes. Not a problem. There is always undo and redo available on the top left corner. That's the first thing you notice. Second thing, many people get confused with this whiteboard because there is no concept of space. The difference in physical whiteboard versus this whiteboard is physical whiteboard has boundaries which you can see. You know the whiteboard starts here and ends here, no confusion. Whereas in this case, depending on the zoom level, your screen, you may actually get lost. So look at the bottom. There is a zoom level and there is a double headed arrow. Click on that, it will actually fit everything in the screen size so you don't get lost. Now how will you draw? Click on the draw button and you will see a toolbar. You will see three different pens. You can choose different kinds of pens. Then you have a highlighter, you have a laser pointer, and you have an eraser. Even if you don't have stylus and touch screen, you can use whiteboard. Go to the create button and choose type. So just using keyboard and mouse, you can still participate in whiteboarding. Great. Now when it comes to inking, it's just free form inking. You can use mouse or stylus or even finger on the mobile phone. But there are many nice inks, thickness and arrows. So every stroke will actually end up in an arrow, which is really nice. If you are a presenter, use the laser pointer. It's a beautiful laser pointer. It leaves a trail and that trail slowly disappears. It's really beautiful. Now, if you want to erase something, there is an eraser. Either it will work like a regular eraser. There is another option which says erase the stroke, which is much faster. Now go to notes. In create, there is a single note, multiple notes or also a note grid. So now what happens in note grade is you create a note grade, you write something on it and people are also going to interact. But others should not move the notes grade itself. So notes grade or in fact any other object which you draw can be locked so that you focus on things which are interactive and don't disturb other things. There is something called enhanced inking. So go to the wheel and make sure that is on. What does it do? If you draw a circle, obviously you're not going to be able to draw a perfect circle but it'll actually convert it to a perfect circle or a rectangle or a triangle. It's really nice. Now, while people are working on it, you can ask them to use reactions. Suppose you have put an agenda and you want to find out the most priority items, most liked items, people can use reactions and you will get a count also as to how many people reacted in which way. Now, if multiple people are using mouse cursor, then you can actually see everyone's cursor so that you get a sense of collaboration visually. That's called collaborative cursor. Of course, you can upload images. For example, you have a base design or a draft design and you want people to give suggestions. So put the image, lock it and let people interact with the image. As though this is not enough, you can even start from a PowerPoint or PDF document, choose the specific slides or pages, lock them and then on top of it, you can do further interaction. So because it's a Teams meeting, when the meeting is over, the meeting doesn't die it becomes a chat in Teams, which is a brilliant feature and you must use it. So all the post-meeting collaboration can happen in that chat instead of sending random emails to each other. As a part of that post-meeting chat, you'll be surprised to know that the whiteboard is still there. Not as an image, it's alive and you can continue collaboration lifelong if you like. Where is it stored? So technically speaking, it's just a file and it goes to your OneDrive or the person who initiated the whiteboard that person's OneDrive and everyone is given edit access. So now I hope you have got a much better idea of how beautiful, powerful and useful whiteboard is. So 
So I'm sure you're going to try it out in the next meeting. So why not spread the word? Like the video, share it with your friends, colleagues and loved ones and continue learning, continue becoming more efficient by subscribing to my channel. I regularly post a lot of stuff which will make you work smarter and grow faster. That's it for now. Thank you.